Daniel and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to inspiration, information, education, guidance, advice, and um, throughout uh, our Tanakh, throughout our uh, Hebrew scriptures, and throughout all of Jewish, Jewish um, literature, uh, there are many similes and metaphors uh, describing the Jewish people. What we're like, we're like this, we're like that. And something that um, has always interested me is the comparison uh, of the Jewish people to olives, specifically olive oil. Um, an example is in Jeremiah, uh, in chapter 11, 16. Hashem has called you a verdant olive tree. Why did Jeremiah feel the need to compare us to olives, to, to olive trees? The Medrash, the um, homiletic uh, uh, interpretations and analyses of, uh, of Scripture, uh, point out and uh, teaches us, explains, that um, of all drinkable liquids, juices, wine, beer, water, milk. They all mix together. You can all you can mix them all up and once they're mixed, uh, you can't tell what's what. They all blend into the same thing. Oil stands alone. Um, it always separates. It always it doesn't mix with other liquids, the Jewish people, sometimes of our own accord, sometimes out of a situation, sometimes forced on us by other people, the Jewish nation always stands apart, stands alone. It doesn't mix with other people, it doesn't mix with other nations. Um, another way of looking at it. Aside from not mixing, what's another thing about oil? When it does separate, it rises. When other liquids are mixed, you can't tell what's above, what's below. Oil not only separates itself, but it rises to the top. The Jewish people, when we perform the will of the Creator, when we uh, Form, uh, the mitzvahs, when we live the word of God, we ascend to the top, spiritually high, more than the common riffraff uh, of the world. Now, at first glance, they, uh, they basically mean the same thing. Well, it separates, it rises to the top, and when it goes up, I mean, what's the difference? about whether you're on the top or the bottom. It was um, Rav Yosef Konvitz who commented the first example about it just simply doesn't mix with others refers to a time when we were living when we are living in, uh, in the land of Israel. In our own land, we are in a sheltered environment, protected from the harmful effects uh, of the outside world. Even then, we're told not to mix, not to marry outside uh, our faith. The second idea, the one mentioned by the Medrash about rising to the top, that applies to when we're outside the land of Israel, when we were in Golis, when we were in exile, uh, among the uh, other nations of the world. Who will protect us? How are we to secure ourselves from acculturation, from assimilation, from disappearing and blending in with all the other uh, people of the world? The answer is in the Torah. Only by adhering to the Torah, only by adhering to the Word of God, only by fulfilling the mitzvahs 
as God has intended them to be filled. That's the antidote to assimilation, what's called these days the silent holocaust. We rise to the top when we are fortified with the Torah. When Jews study the Torah, when we perform the commandments, we're respected for that. We're respected by those, uh, those around us. Um, we develop a, a stature, an image, which many people, most people, respect at a certain level. Torah refines us, and it becomes obvious. We rise above the nations of the world with the buoyancy imbued in us with the Torah. Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, grew up in Pharaoh's home, um, the highest of the high of Egyptian society at that time, the royalty, the aristocracy. Um, not the most uh, morally advanced, spiritually advanced of nations, and yet Moses was able to separate himself. Even he grew up in that environment from the time he was a very, very little baby, surrounded by uh, Egyptian culture, Egyptian philosophy. Still, he remained separate. Um, later, when he goes to live uh, with his father-in-law, Yisro, Yitro, Jethro. Um, also, um, he was an Egyptian, but he's far from being a pious Jew. He did not acculturate. He did not blend in. What protected him? His amuna, his faith in Hashem, his belief and trust, bitachon, trust in the Almighty, that protected him, that, 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 uh, inoculated him from uh, from what was uh, around him, it elevated him, and it gave him the strength to overcome whatever challenges and obstacles uh, stood in his path. Joseph, when he was uh, in Egypt, same thing. He was uh, a viceroy uh, in the Egyptian government, a person of high position, extremely familiar uh, with Egypt, its society, its workings. Uh, Yosef HaTzadik, Joseph the Righteous, relied on his faith to overcome the constant trials that he had. And he not only did this for himself, he was able to raise uh, two sons, Ephraim and Manasha, and they too were raised as Jews and uh, did not blend in with society. They, mem they, main they remained true to the Creator right from birth. Um, it's not a racist, elitist philosophy. Creator has set us aside for a purpose. He tells us not to mix in, not to blend in. He needs us to be us. And as long as we are true to the Creator, as long as we are uh, true to the Word of God, we will always remain a people apart. Uh, that is the way God intends it. Uh, we're going to be doing the uh, more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Immuno Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.